Okay, and welcome to uh, chapter three, I guess, of uh, the Sculpty Paint tutorial. Um, once again, uh, this is part of a multi-part tutorial because it's gotten a lot longer, a lot more complicated than I originally thought it was going to be. Uh, there's a lot of information to impart, and I'm doing my best to give as much as I've got. Um, this is a free program, and uh, they, the guy who made it encourages donations, and in a manner of speaking, this is my donation. Um, because uh, there aren't a lot of tutorials out there for software, and this program really needs one badly. Um, we're on Chapter 3, and we've gone through the Morph tool uh, down here, and we've gone through the RGB Layers Drawing Tool and Flower Tool. As I said, I didn't really understand those, those pages very much, and really they are kind of like programs unto themselves, although they do interact very well with each other. Uh, this program allows you to zigzag between modes, but those uh, those tabs, I don't know so much about. Now this tab's got a lot of information on it, and I'm going to try and go through it as fast as I can and keep us uh, more or less on task. Uh, but I might have to break this into two sections just for this one page. Uh, this is by far probably my favorite page. Uh, this is the stone tool. And what the stone tool is good for is it's good for making rocks. Uh, making semi-organic uh, shapes that don't have any real structure to them. Um, they're not, you know, they're, they're, they're random, relatively random shapes. Uh, this is great if you're doing gardening, uh, if you're doing sort of structural work where you got to build up a, a mountain or a hill or something like that, and you need some prims to, to build that with, caves, that kind of thing. Um, this is the tool for you. Uh, now, this can't do everything, you know, it's not a, it's, it's not magic, uh, but what we can do is we can do quite a bit. Now, uh, in our preview window here, I've got a sphere, and I've got it rotated. Who knows how how it's rotated? I don't really care. Um, but I'm going to tell you what the what these tools over here do. Now, to start with, um, there are these four random buttons, and there's this randomize a bit, which is a sort of a general noise filter just sort of adds a little noise to the to the sculpt that's really cool but randomize a lot oh boy we'll get there oh, I'll show you in a second here uh, there's also random pincher and random extruder and I want to talk a little bit about about what pinch and extrude mean um, if you think of clay you create if you grab a piece of clay and squeeze it that's pinching it and if you sort of pull, if you grab it with like both hands and start pulling it apart from the from like the edges and start pulling it out, out a little bit, that would be like extruding, like you're stretching. And uh, the programmer, Cell, Cell Eggman, when he made this program, I'm sure he had his reasons why he used the terms pinch and extrude. They don't always make perfect sense as to what what they do in relation to what's going on on the screen. Um, but let's let's just move on. Uh, randomize a bit. Randomize a bit adds a little bit of noise to the sculpt map. Unfortunately, you can't see the sculpt map on here to see the noise showing up because, for whatever reason, Cell decided it would be cool to put the texture here instead. Um, but that's not important. Uh, you can't draw on here anyway on this screen, so that's probably why it's here is to keep you from thinking you can mask off areas. Um, Randomize a bit lets you randomize a little bit and sort of make it generally like that. Uh, of course, you've got a smooth tool here, which allows you to smooth either to the plane, to the torus, or to the sculpt, to the sphere. I should say smooth sphere, but it says smooth sculpt because this was, of course, the first type of sculpt there was. Um, this allows you to sort of smooth out any rough edges you've created. Uh, but of course, this isn't going to be a perfect smear any sphere anymore because we've randomized it. So let's pop back to perfect. Okay. Now, randomize a lot. Randomizes a lot. And the uh, nice thing about randomize a lot is that you can smooth the sculpt and just a few taps and almost instantly you've got something that would pass for some kind of an asteroid or a rock. And it's very handy for getting a random rock out of the program and uh, for a first sculpted prim, you throw a rock texture on there, and people will go, wow, you got a really neat rock there. Nice thing about this is also is if it's mostly spherical, the uh, bump or the, the bounding box, the physics bounding box around, this, around the prim, 
if you hit resize sculpt the physics bounding box around this sculpt will be almost perfect there'll be these little dips where it goes below and these little bumps where it goes under and it's it'll just be enough to you could make a you can make a like a beach out of this and you wouldn't really notice that you weren't standing exactly on top of it and if your feet sunk a little into the sand well <laughs> it's a beach anyway um reset sphere um random pincher now pinching is sort of sucking in in this case and if we random pinch you can see that random areas are being sucked into the sphere and the nice thing about this tool is it allows you to create s relatively randomized craters, which can be very handy. Let me go ahead and switch over to the solid node. You can sort of see that this would pass for some sort of a, a, loon, a moon of some kind, some sort of moon. And if you hit randomize a couple times, yeah, you could you could see that as a moon, especially with the right texture. Um, let me go ahead and uh, show you what Extruder does. Random Extruder pops things out. Uh, so it sort of pushes them out. Now, for whatever reason, Random Extruder pushes things out way further than Random Pincher pulls them in. I don't know why that is. But uh, if you smooth sculpt, you can see that those go away fairly quickly. And uh, you combine it, a few of these here and there. Tap one of those in, and then randomize some of this in there, some of that, and a little bit of this, and smooth it back out, and suddenly you've got yourself a nice space rock looking surface right there. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, we're, we're kind of pressed for time. I know that these are only allowed to be 10 minute chunks. So let's, uh, let's go over to the grid pincher. Now I did a little experiment with this just now, and I found out that the grid pincher will pinch on a grid. Now, these numbers have very little to do with reality. Uh, while um, I'm sure there's some mathematical reason for it, but the 16 pulls in 16 points, okay? Which and they're all evenly spaced, which is really cool. But the 32, let me. I gotta reset that so we can see it. The 32 only pulls in four. I have no idea why that is. Or is it three? I think it, no, there's the fourth one there. Okay. So it pulls in four. Again, no idea why. Um, you can see this typified more when we go to the extruder. But, um, or whatever. Um, yeah, my, my use of the English language sometimes astounds even me. Um, the eight mode grid, grid pincher uh, allows you to you get quite a few more. It looks like you get 32 and you get 4 over here. Maybe you get 64. I, I don't know what the math is that's actually going on here, but this number is, is kind of backwards. Um, and if we look at the... Uh, let me go ahead and tap this over here. These are Again, they're evenly spaced though. And it might be how many spaces there are between you know, between the ones it does. But if we do the grid extruder here, you can see that there's quite a few of them. Handy if you want an evenly munged up thing, like you want to make like some sort of dog chew toy or something like that. That'd be perfect for that, you know? Because uh, you could, you know, just sort of tap it a few times and then smooth it out, and then tap it a couple more times and then smooth it out, tap it a couple more times and then smooth it out. And look, you got you got the perfect dog chew toy right there. Um, very, very handy. Again, if you need a dog chew toy in Second Life. Um, that's about where we're going to have to break it here, because clearly there's enough to do another chapter, and there's only about 45 seconds left in this block. So I'm going to drop it at this chapter, and we'll pick it up in Chapter 4. Stay tuned.